Coming up next, Frank and Mary here in Framingham uh, with your co-hosts, Grace O'Donnell and me, Art Bergeron. Our guest today is John Neese, Chief Assessor of the Town of Framingham. Stay tuned. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. And I'm Art Bergeron, and my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, a 70-person law firm with the biggest outside of Boston, so everybody specialized, I get to do elder law. But this is not about elder law. This is about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations on Zoom or the, at the local senior centers, you know that Frank and Mary have a very simple goal in life. They want to live in their house until they die. They want to be buried in the backyard. So the question is, if that's like you, if you can identify with that, who are the people that you need to know? And what are the programs that you need to know about so that you can stay right here in Framingham for the rest of your life? And Grace O'Donnell, my wonderful co-host, always finds the people who can really help you do that. And this guest in particular is a person you want to know if you want to stay in your house and be happy without spending too much money. Grace, whom do we have? Hi, Arthur. Our guest today is John Neese, Chief Assessor of the City of Framingham. He will talk with us today about real estate tax exemptions and real estate tax deferrals, programs that are available to help seniors reduce some of their property tax bills. So welcome. So and, and, Grace, and, and Grace told me you've got a boatload of material. So uh, thank you very much for coming on. This is really a crucial topic to all of Grace's clients and mine. You're welcome. So hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for the opportunity, uh, the invitation, and uh, the opportunity to share some information with you today. So as Grace mentioned, we are going to uh, focus on real estate tax exemptions and real estate tax deferrals. Those are all found in Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 59, Section 5. Uh, and then we're going to touch on a few other issues as well. So uh, back in 1974, a tax court judge from Oregon said that the whole subject of appraisal or assessing or valuation of property is not an art and is not a science, but in his opinion was a mystery. So we're going to try and take some of that mystery out of um, the, uh, the issues that we're going to talk about today. And we'll start here. So um, I do want to thank my staff. I am very fortunate to have a very dedicated and very talented staff. Uh, they do all the work and I get all the credit. Dale, the office manager, and Casey, the customer service representative, are the two people in the office that deal with uh, the exemption and the tax deferral issues most of the time. So our phone number is there and our email address is there. Uh, so please feel free to call them um, or anyone on the staff. Uh, next. So just briefly on definitions, uh, the assessed value of a property is based on full and fair cash value, and it's usually shown uh, on the tax bill as a combination of the value of the land, the building, and other values, which could be yard items like a deck or a swimming pool or something like that. Uh, and that's clearly what's used to uh, levy the taxes on, uh, on your property in the city of Framingham. Uh, we, uh, we go by fiscal year. I won't read through all of that, but um, domicile is an important uh, issue. That is your legal or principal residence. Now, you can have more than one residence, but you can only have one domicile. So, for example, you own a property in the city of Framingham, um, but you like to get away for the winter weather, and you also own a condominium in Florida. So uh, two residences, but only one domicile that you can claim as your principal residence and that you can file for an exemption on. Now, the two issues we're going to talk about are exemptions and deferrals, and there is an important distinction between those two. So an exemption is a discharge of 
part or all of your obligation to pay a real estate property tax, and we will run through those in a few minutes. Uh, A deferral, on the other hand, is a delayed action. So your taxes don't go away, but rather than pay them now, you um, or uh, your estate could pay them later. So if we go to the next slide, um, I would like to say, there we go, uh, that uh, the assessing staff and the board of assessors would really like to help everyone in the city of Framingham uh, who qualifies for an exemption. Now, these um, various tax reducing programs uh, are generally based on age, assets, and income, or a combination of those three factors. And I'm not going to read through this, but um, this is an example of what we look at in terms of your assets and in terms of your uh, annual income. So if we go to the next one, This just provides you some general information on all of the different programs. So if you are applying for an exemption in Framingham, you need to own and occupy that property as your domicile uh, at the time of the application. You could have, however, owned and occupied any other property in Massachusetts for the past five years. Let's say you're in Framingham now, but you moved here from Holliston or some other community. Uh, You also need to have lived in Massachusetts for at least 10 years, but some of that time could be as a tenant somewhere. Um, So 10 years in total, five years um, in Massachusetts with a property that you own um, and in Framingham um, at the time of the application. You must file an application uh, annually and you must qualify each year because your assets or your income could change. Next slide. So the first issue we're going to talk about is we're going to go through the various exemptions that are available to you. And generally, you can only qualify for one exemption, but there are some exceptions to that. For example, we're going to be talking about the new CPA surcharge going forward. So you could get an exemption as a senior, and you could also get an exemption from the CPA surcharge. So next... This will show you uh, the different exemptions. So the first one we will discuss is a Clause 17D exemption. That is a $175 uh, reduction uh, in your real estate tax. So you could qualify if you are senior uh, and at least 70 years old by a specific date. Uh, If you are surviving spouse, and there is no age requirement for that one, or if you are, mi- if you are a minor uh, that is a child younger than 18 uh, who has a deceased parent. In all three cases, uh, you have personal estate. So there's no income requirement for this uh, particular exemption, but your personal estate or your assets, excluding your domicile, cannot exceed uh, $40,000. So if we go to the next slide. So uh, this is just the first page of an application. You can see on the top, it reads either 17 or 41. So for a 17D, for example, you could use this as a senior. The application is only a few pages long. I've only put page one on the screen just to show you an example. Um, You can um, go to a different application, for example, and another one that I'm looking at right now in my notebook uh, has a box to check off if you are a senior, a different box if you are a surviving spouse, and a different box if you are um, a minor with a a deceased parent. Uh, If we go to the next one, and this, this is from uh, the Division of Local Services of the Department of Revenue. It's actually this particular uh, guide is actually five pages long. I'm only going to, again, show page one on the screen. But there is one of these for each clause that is allowed by statute. So if you wanted additional information, we could provide it to you. You could go to the Department of Revenue website. Uh, but it provides very good uh, documentation of everything that is required uh, in order to qualify for any one of these exemptions. And again, there is one for uh, each type of exemption that is available. So if we go to the next slide, and and, um, I didn't say this when we started, but please, Grace or Arthur, feel free to interrupt me at any time if you have a question or if you need a clarification. 
Thanks. So the next one is Clause 22 and Clause 22A to 22F. So these are veterans exemptions. So obviously you need to be a veteran uh, to qualify for one of these. There is no age requirement for these and the amount of the real estate tax reduction varies. So a veteran with a minimum 10% service related disability and a letter from the Veterans Administration would qualify. You might be a veteran with a 30% disability, a 50% disability, but you need to have a minimum of 10%. And regardless of the other percentage amount, uh, the exemption would be the same unless you have a 100% exemption. Um, you would qualify if you have been awarded a Purple Heart. A spouse of a veteran would qualify as long as the spouse has not remarried. Uh, and the real estate uh, tax exemptions amount for these different exemptions uh, range anywhere from $400 for a Clause 22, for example, to $750 or $1,000 or $1,250 or $1,500. Um, for a clause 22A to a 22F exemption and all the way to the full amount of your real estate tax bill. So even if that bill was $5,000, if you qualified for that particular exemption, um, you would have a reduction of the entire tax amount. If we go Could to I next... ask a question on that, John? Absolutely. If the veteran passed away and the spouse was not a veteran themselves, would the spouse in the uh, domicile still be eligible for that exemption that the veteran had been given? Yeah, yes, she would. Okay. As long as she remains unmarried. Okay. So the next one is a clause 37A exemption. This is a $500 uh, reduction in your real estate tax. Um, and this is for someone who is legally blind uh, and all we need, very simple, there is an application, but uh, the only thing we really need is a certificate from the Mass Commission um, of the Blind, which, uh, you know, those applicants supply to us every year for, um, for this exemption. We go to the next one. So this is a Clause 41C exemption. This is a $1,000 uh, real estate tax reduction. So it kind of ties into the 17D that we started with. So um, generally a senior um, will qualify for either a 17D or a 41C. The 17D is easier because there were no income uh, requirements. The 41C is a little stricter because you're getting a substantially higher reduction in your tax. So for this one, uh, you need to be 65 years of age. And there is uh, an income and asset limit, uh, whether you are single uh, or whether you are married. So uh, income limit 20,000 for single, 40,000 for your assets. If you're married, 30,000 in terms of income and $55,000 uh, in terms of assets. We'll go to the next one. This is a clause 42. So here's uh, another example of a 100% uh, exemption on your taxes. So, um, you know, very sorry if something like this happened to you, obviously, but if you are a surviving spouse of a police officer or a firefighter uh, that has been killed in the line of duty and you have not remarried, you will have a full exemption on your real estate tax. You must own and occupy the property uh, as your domicile or principal residence uh, as the spouse. Next. So this one's a little unusual um, and um, it is the clause 18 financial hardship exemption. Now, most of them are defined very clearly by statute in terms of the qualifications and the income and the assets. This one uh, the amount of the real estate tax re reduction and the approval um, are based upon the Board of Assessors discretion. Um, I think that because of that, it is a little harder to get, but you need to own the property and generally you need to be both or all of aged infirmed and impoverished, uh, not just one or the other, not just 90 years old, but not 50 years old, but infirmed. Or, um, so generally all three of those are required in order to qualify. But as an example, 
uh, let's say someone had um, a serious medical issue. So they are an older person, um, they are infirmed um, uh, by uh, or as a result of that medical situation and impoverished if they ran out of medical insurance and they can't continue to pay the bills um, for their medical care. Um, you know, that's certainly something that the Board of Assessors would look at. Uh, and again, this is something different than the other statutes uh, and the other exemptions uh, where the board really has discretion on both the qualifications and the allowance for this program. Uh, we have only one of these right now in Framingham. Um, I'm not sure why, um, uh, but we certainly would encourage people to, um, you know, to call and ask about this if they think that they qualify. John, right, can, so I just next, add, can I just add one thing on that? Absolutely. That, that, that is really, really important for people to understand. A lot of times people won't apply because there isn't a specific threshold, you know, and they hate to be begging or whatever. But the situation you're describing is not uncommon among folks who see Grace and folks who see me, that you, you're older, you've had the house forever, your health is really declining. As a result, perhaps you're needing a lot of care at home for any number of reasons. Your assets may just be evaporating and, the, and, and your tax bill may be one of your biggest ta you know, issues. So you, you really want to encourage people because the, the folks are there to help you, you know, You've been living there forever. You know, you, they're there to help you. I just want to kind of emphasize that. All right. Thank you. Very good point. And again, you know, we would like to see everyone who qualifies receive, receive the exemption that they deserve. And we always try to give them the exemption that would give them the greatest tax relief. Um, if they qualify for um, a 41C at $1,000, we're not going to give them a 17D for $175. Um, you know, most of them, again, are defined by statute. So there's nothing we can do unless they qualify. Uh, the 18, again, the board does have, um, you know, some more discretion, um, you know, in that issue. Now, I didn't put a slide up. Um, I, I will leave this one here. I'll go to CTA in a minute. Um, I did not put a slide up because it had even more information than this one here. But I did, um, you know, want the residents who might be listening to this program to know that for the last fiscal year in Framingham, uh, the city gave out 271 uh, exemptions. It may not seem like a lot in terms of the number of residents we have, um, but 271 exemptions for those different clauses that we talked about without going through each one individually and telling you how many 22s and how many 41Cs. But, um, and that was uh, just over $274,000 in total uh, that was exempted um, from various residence taxes. So let's lay, uh, stay on this slide for a minute. So uh, the CPA... Um, is uh, is now in Framingham for the first time. So uh, residents will see a CPA surcharge on their bill. Uh, and again, if you qualify for this exemption, uh, the full of the amount, the full amount of the CPA um, would be waived. Um, you do need to file an application, uh, and it is based on age, family size, and income, which I'll come back to in a minute. But this was approved by the voters uh, of the city of Framingham in November of uh, 2020. Um, and it is legislation that allows the city or town to put the surcharge on the tax bill uh, and to use it for some of the things that are highlighted there uh, in bold and italics, which I won't, uh, which I won't read through. Um, so you have to be at least 60 years or older. Um, and if we go to the next slide, it will show um, oh, sorry, this one first, I guess. So again, this is just the first page of the application. Um, these will be available uh, either um, online or, or through the mail. Some people have already requested one, um, but um, that's just the first page of the application and you will need to file the application annually. Uh, if we go to the next page, uh, this is really the qualification issue uh, in this term. So there will be a chart on the back of the application um, and you need to be again, uh, either 60 or older. Uh, if you are 65, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, you, you need to be under 60. Oh, 
I better check a little bit of my facts on this one to make sure they're right. But um, you will see that depending upon your age, there are different uh, income qualifications for uh, different family size. So if you are older, you can actually make more income and still qualify for the uh, for the CPA exemption. And that information is uh, is updated each year um, from uh, family family median income uh, information that um, that we get. So that takes us through the exemptions, and now we will talk about um, actually what do we have? Really, just one deferral. So if we go to the next page. This is Clause 41A, which is a real estate tax deferral. Uh, This is a wonderful program for Frank and Mary to stay in their house. You have to be 65 or older. Uh, The income limit is 60,000, which is fairly generous. It was changed uh, recently uh, from $40,000 to 60,000 so that more people could potentially qualify. There is no asset requirement in this one. Uh, The taxpayer will select the tax amount that they want to defer. It can be a portion of the real estate tax or the entire real estate tax. Uh, The interest rate is very low, 1%. uh, And that was also changed recently from 4%, which actually wasn't too high either, but 1% is even better. Uh, And then the city will collect the full tax amount when either the property is sold or transferred uh, or upon the death of the owner. We have right now only five of these in Framingham. Uh, Again, I'm not sure why. I think it's because some people um, don't want to burden their children or their heirs with the expense of the taxes. But I think um, I should be careful, I guess, about what I say and Arthur can help me. But I, I think Frank and Mary should be more concerned about themselves uh, and staying in their house than, uh, you know, than about their children who may have to pay some back taxes later. There are just a couple of other things. Um, the lender has to agree uh, to subordinate the loan. Um, so that the town, the city uh, is actually in the first position to collect their money before an outstanding mortgage, if there is one. Uh, In our experience, most lenders will agree to do that. Um, We have seen instances where some won't. We have no control over that. And you do have to, um, at all times, have at least a 50% equity um, position in your house. But again, um, house prices have gone up so dramatically. If you have a house in Framingham that's worth 500000 and your mortgage is 250000 or less, um, you know, clearly you have a 50% equity position in the house so that you would qualify. John, you make a great point there about how much the value of homes have increased. When many of these seniors bought their homes, it was for maybe fifty or $60,000, and now they're worth 500000 or 600000 right. So clearly their children won't be at a loss for the uh, proceeds from the sale to cover that deferred taxes. So for people who are struggling financially, that really is something for them to take advantage of. Absolutely. And John, I'd like to just kind of re- re- reiterate, this is a crucial piece of any senior's estate plan or, or planning to stay at home, to stay at home. For many, many seniors, after the food bill, the tax bill is the biggest bill they have. Mm-hmm. Biggest bill they have. And, and, and I also want to, and, and so to be able to defer this, to be able to take advantage of your own home, which you saved up for all your life, to be able to stay in your own home, right, is a wonderful thing. And, and you know, people sometimes won't do this, but instead they'll go to a bank and get a home, one of these home equity lines of credit. You will never get a rate at the bank that looks like what you see on that slide, 1%. One percent, and for many, many of my clients, this is right. not an un- sixty thousand dollars as an income limit is really substantial. And I want to emphasize, I do this this kind of work in a lot of communities. This is terrific compared to many neighboring communities, both in terms of the amount of money that you're allowed to earn and in terms of the interest rate. So it's something you really, really want to look at. Thank, thank you both for those comments. And I only have a few slides left. And I won't read through any of this. These are things to remember. But as a courtesy, if you receive an exemption one year, you automatically go on the mailing list. And just one last slide, maybe very quickly. Next. 
Um, there is also a circuit breaker tax credit that has nothing to do with the city. You'd want to talk to your tax accountant. There is also a senior tax work program, and you can talk to Grace about that. The treasurer collector also administers an elderly and disabled tax relief fund that you can apply for. And remember that there is a veteran services uh, director at City Hall. And the next slide was on abatement. So um, since that's not really an exemption or deferral, I will, um, I will stop. And what we're going to say to people who are watching is this guy really knows what he's talking about. And that whole department is interested in helping you. So give them a call. Just give them a call. You, the, you know, the, the, the worst you can hear is no. And they're going to try to work out how to get to yes. So right. thank you so much, John, for doing this. Grace, thanks so much once again for bringing us a great guest. Folks, we hope you enjoyed this. Give John a call and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you very much.